All right, so uh, I'm going to start this out by looking at Baidu. Uh, what we're doing in here is taking our analysis and then uh, using uh, that to talk about how we look at the analysis and what our trade planning is uh, based on that analysis. So I'm going to start it out looking at Baidu with some comparison to the Chinese market FXI, and that's a, a long intermediate outlook. Uh, and Arvi is going to look at Oracle, which is a short-term uh, outlook, and then Matt will look at uh, FCX, uh, which is a long and, uh, and an intermediate outlook. So Arvi, did I say that's a short-term outlook? All right, yep. so let's yep. take a look here as we look at the uh, at these charts. So I'm going to switch over to the Baidu chart right here. And what we're looking at is our cycle analysis. I'll just uh, blow this out a little bit right over here, and we're looking at the side-by-side. -side. Okay, so this is Baidu on the left, and you can see it was up here at 354 uh, back a couple of years ago, and then broke all the way down here to $73. Now, look at the cyclical rhythms in here. As you see, this, the um, cycle brackets are on the bottom, and you can see this low lining up right here and here and here and here. Those are all important low areas. And now we're in this area where it's coming up. Now, I want you to note right in here, that is our reversal scout. I'll blow this up for you right now for you to see. And uh, what we're getting at right over here, when I point to this being bullish, is that there is a cycle that's bottoming right in here. So you can see the rhythms in here as you get into the second half of each cycle and money moves out. This is money flows, essentially. Money moving in, money moving out, money moving in and out. So Baidu here is looking like it has made its bottom and money moving in again. These two lines show you the uh, really plus or minus three weeks from the ideal trough that we're looking for. And here's where the reversal scout points to the upside. Notice right over here where it turned down and it sent you into this decline, and here it's up. Now, you had a rally, hit the resistance, pull back, the probabilities of the third week being the high are extremely low. The probabilities of getting up here to about 129, 130, maybe this is about 136, are extremely high sometime over these next several weeks in Baidu. I just want to look here at the daily, and you could see beautiful basing pattern that's going on in here. Now, what is a basing pattern? That is when you uh, have a higher bottom likely to form after it had been in a decline. You can see lower bottom right here, lower peak, lower bottom in those cycles. And now you have this base forming as it comes down into support and getting ready to move up. That points up into this area right over here, which are the FIB extensions that we're looking at here. That's about 127 to 132. So right now we are in what I consider to be a buy zone and buy timing. So you can see as that looks uh, pretty powerful right there. Now, I want to be sure that uh, you understand that we're under a condition here where the market's been weak. And the momentum in here is just starting to improve. So you might start out with a smaller position. I want to look at FXI and see how this aligns with this because FXI is the Chinese market and Baidu is a Chinese stock. So when I open this up right over here, you can see that what we're looking at is a bottoming going on or bottom due with no sign of it starting yet in FXI, in the Chinese market, and the momentum still coming down. So you have to look at that with just a little bit of caution when you're thinking about trading this on the long side or Baidu. When I look here at the daily chart, you can see in here those cycle rhythms, beautiful, but while Baidu has a base forming, this does not. The momentum still negative. The slim ribbon PO still negative. Negative signals coming on in here. And we have a note here. All momentum is negative. And anticipating troughs means the smallest size trades. That's important here when you do this kind of analysis. So we're, we're looking at an intermediate analysis that suggests that FXI should bottom, but it's still negative momentum and no proven bottom yet, which says keep your size small even though Baidu, B-I-D-U, has got all signs 
that it is ready to move to the upside. I tell you, when I look at this, it's so important to do the some of the uh, evidence analysis that says to you also about position sizing. And this one says to me, stay small. It looks like a long side trade in Baidu. I'm going to turn this over to Arby to do Oracle. All right, beautiful. Thank you, Slim. Let's go ahead and pull up uh, my screen. We'll look at the weekly and daily cycle analysis for Oracle. Give me one second to load. Should see the chart of Oracle, weekly on the left, daily on the right. So you'll see right here, which is really why this is interesting, is you see that this formed a higher high right there versus that old high and a higher low versus that old low. Based on that, we would have looked for this to move back towards this old high here at 127.50. But what happened is it actually made a lower high and then now has moved below that low at 99.87. What that says is this is very likely the high here. And we are then looking for this to overall pull back into this low, which is only due out in that May to June time period in Oracle. On the downside, we're looking for a move into this zone from 96.05 to right around $90, even uh, into that late spring to early part of summer time period in ORCL. Now, if this were to somehow move through this old high right there, at 117.67, that would say that this is a late weekly low, meaning that this low here has shifted out to the right, and that is that key intermediate term trough. Shift over now to the short term. So this period right here, you can see we have obviously moved down sharply. Looks a lot like this period right here, where we moved down, formed that bear flag, then rolled down. We had the same thing right here. We, we moved down, looked at this old low, forming what is likely a bear flag, and we're looking for this to also sell off into this low, which is due 1.5 to 1.18 here in ORCL. Now, on the upside, you know, we're looking for this to fail uh, basically right around here, 106.29 to 108.47. If this moves through 110.64, then this would, um, you know, be one that did not work. And on the downside, we are looking for a move back to this old swing low at uh, at 99.87. And then we have this level right here at 96.02. Okay, so that's the look here in, in uh, ORCL. We are looking for this to turn down shortly. And I'll go ahead and hand this off to you, Matt. All right, great work, Slim and RV. Thank you. It's always fun to hear our team go through our trade planning process as we do our analysis and then convert that into the trade idea. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. And as part of my segment, I also like to just give you a little sense of the process uh, in terms of how did I find my idea using any of the Ask Slim uh, tools and services. So you should see the charts hub up on my screen. And this is an excellent tool. So if you're a level two or higher member, you have the opportunity to quickly and efficiently uh, go through our weekly and daily cycle analysis and all of the symbols that are in our focus list, which is and just an awesome assortment and variety of stocks, ETFs, and uh, futures markets. And you can see here, as I just scroll through, we have just an awesome uh, assortment. And uh, you simply click on one of the symbols, and then it pulls up uh, defaults to the weekly chart. And then you can also look at the daily chart. And... As I was going through the symbols, the one that caught my attention uh, was FCX. So I am going to pull that over and we're gonna step through the trading, uh, the analysis and trading plan on FCX. I'm gonna pull up my little sticky notes here too. So when it comes to trade planning, there you want your, your analysis and your methodology to be able to answer some key core trade planning questions. And, and RV does this many times a week in our trade ideas uh, service that we offer, where he will go through the analysis as we're doing right now, uh, at times creates a video around that analysis as well, and then has a template where he fills out a very specific set of information regarding the trading plan. And that consists of our outlook period. So uh, each one of us uh, analysts today talked about our outlook period. So for me, as I look at FCX, I'm looking at an intermediate or slightly longer term outlook. So that would mean something like three to eight weeks or even uh, a couple months out. 
once we identified our outlook period, you really want to match that up to the analysis that you're doing in your, on your charts. So in this case, we're looking at weekly and daily charts. And I'll even go into the two hour to show uh, some information around that. Uh, what is my directional bias? Now, obviously, if you're going to position your trade, you need to understand what your directional bias is as you do your planning. And uh, my directional bias on FCX is bullish. And I'm going to step through that here in just a second. And then you, we want to identify our key levels, including, as you saw, Slim and RV, what's our reevaluation levels? What are those areas that tell us that that analysis is something's changing and we either need to take some off or remove that position altogether? And then once you do, have done your analysis, it's really important to then say to yourself, do I have a, a, a tradable edge? Is the information allow me to put and execute a strategy around it? And then once you've done that, you want to be able to pinpoint what signals you, you need to say that that trade is a go and it's time to, to execute it. And I'll obviously always want to have our risk and money management rules in place. Okay, so there's a the high level. Now let's get into the details. I'm going to pull over my other uh, sticky note here. So why, why the bullish directional bias? As Slim and Arv are talking about, we look at a sum of the evidence where we want to have our methodology put the odds of our trade setup uh, in our favor. There are no certainties. There are only odds. And over a sample size, if you have a methodology that generates edges, you should ultimately become profitable, especially if you're your winning trades are larger uh, than your losing trades. So as we look at the weekly chart, which I have up here right now, uh, we have a, a inter, uh, intermediate cycle structure that now is warning positive. So we had a cycle low here. And when we made that next cycle, low, we actually violated it slightly. So that would have been negative as we started this cycle for that intermediate. However, over the last several weeks in this new rising phase, it's been a, quite a significant advance that has actually now made two weeks in a row above that intermediate 78.6, which for us warns that this cycle structure now is, is shifting positive. So that's number one. Number two is our momentum indicator is firmly positive as well. So we have both cycle structure and we have momentum positive. And then also if we expand out here a little bit, which I'll do in just a second, you'll see that the, the longer term patterns are also a holding uh, quite positively. So uh, in addition to that, we, we, we look at time, right? Our cycle analysis uh, gives us a sense of time. And right now we're still in that, that rising and, and, and really, if at all, just getting into some early peaking, but essentially still in an early rising uh, a, a phase here, which suggests that if we have a, a positive cycle structure, that our translation for this uh, pattern is likely to be a uh, positive, at least at the midpoint, if not a right-hand translation, which would then suggest that that peak comes, comes later. So now, now if I back out here and just look at the, uh, the, the zoom, if I zoom out here, you can see that this overall major pattern is still quite positive, uh, potentially even putting in a, a bull flag here. So again, overall, uh, the pattern structure is the momentum very positive. So once we've identified that, we want to get into our levels and we use a, a uh, swing high, swing low techniques. And as I did my swing high, swing low techniques, I was able to identify some, some key areas where we, based on the patterns, uh, we would likely see if this is to play out bullishly. So I've identified that here in intermediate projection zone over the next several weeks of around 44.40 to 46.75. You can see that also is going to come back to retest that prior cycle high. And then uh, what you would likely see is, is obviously some type of pullback. Now, what I'm showing here is a pullback that would be into the typical maybe 38.2 to 50 percent from uh, that that minor peak that would form. And that would come in, uh, in in the time frame. If I go over then to the daily chart, you'll see here that the daily cycle low is expected somewhere around uh, one one twenty five ish. So around that time frame, there would be a likely pullback, and then we would likely rally again. And the possibility is we either retest or we actually make another new cycle peak uh, up to this longer term seventy eight point six extension. Now, what would invalidate uh, this analysis or require you to reevaluate for sure, take some off, maybe uh, even remove the position uh, at this time, and this would change as as the uh, security continues to move up. Uh, but right now, if there was a close below uh, this 3674 area, then I would have to reevaluate this position or this trade idea altogether. 
So that is the uh, work. Oh, one more thing to point out. On the daily chart, you can see that there was a daily cycle breakout. So that, as Slim and Arby talked about, that some of the evidence is really what you want to look at to get your directional bias. That then helps you position that trade properly, putting the odds in your favor so that you can be on the right side for a longer ride is what we look for.